Dev from Vision 3.0. How are you today, Dev? I'm great. How are you, Tracy? Dev, you have an amazing track record for success in finding excellent projects. So if you could just give us an update on what's happening with Vision 3.0's projects. Thank sure. you. Well, thank you. Uh, great to be here. Well, we've got 16 projects and we this winter drilled two of them, uh, one with our money, PLN, and then we drilled uh, another one with Traction Uranium's money. We're quite happy. We haven't got the results in the second half, but on the PLN, we've certainly identified a corridor now which runs parallel to where the three other major deposits just below us. So that was positive. You, all uranium in the basin always comes up through a conductor, graphitic. So, but not all conductors have you know high grade uranium in them. So we've got to narrow those down. So we've done that. Um, at the overall, you know, being well funded, um, good investor support. And having a really good technical team makes me feel like, okay, we're learning. You know, one thing I have watched now for how many years, our technical team studied, they're always trying to vector in, vector in, vector in, ticking all the boxes of what a deposit must have. Because if you look at the um, Arrow, uh, the Triple R, or Waterbury, you know, they're different types of deposits, but they all have certain signals. And our guys are always trying to tick all the boxes. But it takes time sometimes, and one has to be patient. Okay. And so speaking of that, you, as a result of your reputation and your historic success, uh, you've done a great job at raising capital. Uh, you just had a number of warrants exercised. Can you talk to us about your cash position? Yes, thank you. Uh, ten, about $10 million we have. Um, when we raised that $16, $17 million, we had to spend ten, And now we've been picking up more as we go along. So yeah, we we did focus um, making sure we got our story out and obviously having a huge interest in nuclear power again. Um, you know, we're able to, when you market some good volumes, allow the warrants to be done. So we're very fortunate that way. We just now need to make a discovery. Um, you know, so what have you done yesterday is what are we gonna do? So in that perspective, you know, the pressure's on the team to make another discovery. Now, most people can't find one, we found two, but I believe there's a third one out there. Ray Ashley and the team are quite smart. And we have a great board member with Ross. And we have, that's been super, have great board members like Philip Morehouse and Steve Cochran. They're guys who are entrepreneurs, they understand what it, we gotta take some risks, including marketing and you know different exploration ideas. So. Yeah, we're, we're very fortunate. Now what we need is a continuing rise in the uranium price long-term. Um, spots go up and down, but when I spoke to Tim Getzel uh, last year, CEO of Chemico, he wants the same thing all of us does. We wanna see some long-term contracts at 61, 65. And if that happens, I believe you want the spot price rise even more and everything goes up. Um, I, and I, there are two factors that I can lead to it. One, Grosskopf is uh, able to um, get uh, spot listed on New York Stock Exchange, which he believes access to a ton more cash coming into it, and he'll he'll drive the uranium price up. Um, the other is just seeing if the U.S. legislators um, say that hey, and they've started the process. What it goes through or not is they put a bill in that said. No more Russian uranium, Kazakh, forget it. If that happens, there is about 25 million pounds. Half the uranium, the US use uh, nuclear power for 20% of their energy. And half of that comes from Russia and their friends. Well, that means every 10th light bulb in the States is Russian uranium. So if the politicians push that out, you can watch uranium price go up again. So if I'm correct, the uranium spot price has increased. The increase in uranium uh, interest has increased due to the appreciation from Europeans, for instance, as nuclear energy, as a clean tech source of energy. Right. And then finally, let's discuss the leaky boat, as Christopher Ecclestone calls it, with how the Russians are still managing and the Kazakhstans and friends of Russia are still managing to supply the rest of the world 
uh, uranium in spite of economic san sanctions. Do you have any thoughts on that at this time? Well, I don't think they can. You know, almost 50 of um, Germany's coal. Like they're number one. Look, look at Europe. There's one country in France. France has their own nuclear power. Um, and they were going to bring it down. Now they're saying we want more. Absolutely. They can't do it. Germany cannot shut down financial relationships with Germany. Otherwise, sort of Russia, because they can't buy their uranium. 50% of their coal, like 30% of their oil, so much of their gas, they can't. So it's a dream that people think that Europe's going to shut down their financial relationships with Russia. Um, so I don't think it can happen. Now, it can happen in America because um, in the States, they only need 25 million pounds. They can get that easily from um Australia, they can get that from Namibia and, and definitely Canada, obviously, because, you know, it'll take, there'll be a time to, in order for the chemical to crank back MacArthur back up, uh, it'll take some time, but we can supply it. So, you know, the, but the reality is there's a lot of, you know, I believe the Kazakhs, um, people said never sold for a long time. I teach you as I know um, doing things with them. I think the problem is they won't sell to this, but there's always some kind of rogue country out there that will buy it and package it back up under their name. But everybody knows what's going on. Um, and so I'm not counting on that piece to drive uranium. What I'm counting on is the, the wake up call that the world has seen is that wind and the sun are not uh, the intermittent power. They go up and down and you can't live on that. People want to cook, you know, five o'clock to eight o'clock. They don't want to cook at three o'clock in the morning. So we need power. It has to be stable, base load power. We can, it can, we can hold it in a spot. And there's and only one answer for that. If you don't want your either pollution, you know, or perish, is that the, the, the two things people talk about? You know, so nuclear is definitely, um, and that's why you're seeing Buffett and, uh, Bill Gates build a reactor in Wyoming. Rolls Royce is now doing heavy, um, heavy homework. Um, SMRs, because they believe that's better uh, than a massive nuclear. And I'm with them. I think that's the answer. When we can, little towns can put up a nuclear plant to run everything without pollution, you know, rather than diesel. Of course, I urge everybody to do their own due diligence, but you'll see that Dev has a, an incredible history for actually locating real sources of uranium. And on that note, when should we anticipate some drilling results in these 16 projects, correct? We, we should get some in the next uh, three to four weeks and a batch, and we should be able to get a, another batch um, in about uh, three months. From um, The one advantage of drilling for uranium is you know right away how much radioactivity, and then you get the actual assays. So we're waiting for those results to come in. So they'll start to roll in over the next few weeks. Well, Dev, thank you so much for joining us and providing us with an update for Fission 3.0. Thank you. Thank you for your time.